47-year-old Sally Ann lives in an 18-storey council-owned block. I feel very, very relaxed in this flat. I knew it was mine the minute I walked through the front door. Great views. I just feel comfy in the place. She's been here for the past 17 years and shares it with her pet cat, Custard, and a few other things. We're in the hallway at the moment, and as you can see, it's got a bit quite cluttered. Everything in here is, as you can see, shopping. I've got cakes, I've got biscuits. These are for visitors. More cakes. When I have people come round, I always like to give them a biscuit or a cake when we have a cup of coffee, you know, we're having a chat. Air fresheners, I love my air fresheners. I just love the smell of the orange air freshener. With just Custard the cat sharing Sally's two-bed flat, there's plenty of storage space. There's actually two bedrooms, which are down there. The reason why I can't get down to the back there to sort out any of my other hoarding is because obviously you can see there's a fridge freezer parked in the way. Got a living room, and to the left, there's a kitchen. Up here, straight ahead, as you can see, is the toilet, and then around the corner here is my bathroom. Because I'm not in the bedroom at the moment, my bed's still in here. I didn't realise I even had this many of these cakes, to be honest. My bed's a bit untidy at the moment, but because I can't get into the kitchen, I've done food in here, like sandwiches, which I'm a big fan of anyway. And they're still sitting here. Beetroot. It was smoky bacon, crisps and beetroot. And then what I did notice, which I forgot I put there, if you look, a loaf of bread. This has actually gone mouldy. I don't understand why that happens, to be honest, so. I don't think it's that I can't throw stuff away. It's I can't be bothered to. Living alone and unable to work, hoarding started taking over her life. I think it's when I first moved in on my own, you know. I mean, my place used to get untidy anyway, like everybody's does. And then all of a sudden I thought I need to put the bin out and then I looked and was thinking, oh my gosh, look what's happened. I class myself as a hoarder in the sense of rubbish hoarder. And I did read an article that they reckon that some people who are hoarders in the sense of collective are actually quite um, very bright and very um, intelligent people. So I'm not saying that I'm the intelligent person, I'm just saying some, some form of hoardism um, is to do with being too highly intellectual, but you know, it hasn't been proven. I grew up in Harborn with an older sister and a younger brother. We were all very creative. Um, my father used to do creative stuff and he was a carpenter and joiner. But I used to spend more time on my own, you know, doing my own thing. I was born with Pathes disease, which is a problem with the hips where they didn't grow. So from the age of zero to five, I was in splints. So I used to get picked on quite a lot. So I only had a couple of friends anyway, um, but that didn't bother me anyway, because I was quite a loner. Poor health continued into adulthood. Due to health issues, they kind of like medically retired me. This isn't the first time Sally's hoarding has spiralled out of control. I was living in pure rubbish, and I mean pure rubbish. You couldn't see my bed. From the floor to almost the ceiling was piles and piles of black bags dissolving with cat food in it. It had rotting food and cat litter waste and um, feces and all sorts and I was actually living in all that and on top of that we also had carpet bugs so they were crawling all over me in the bed. I couldn't get to the toilet in time so I had to climb over all the rubbish. I ended up starting urinating bottles and then obviously I'd have the cats you know sleeping around me as well and then they would end up messing in certain corners of the bedroom. You know once you start going down that road if you couldn't stop to get it all sorted on your own you just created um, a hell, basically, to live in. Conditions got so bad that Sally had to accept an intervention by the council or face eviction. I was scared because I knew that I was waiting for that knock on the door or a letter through my door to say um, people are being complaining. It took six days to clear the flat and specialist counselling was put in place to support her. 
After we did the clean, I had 18 month aftercare. So they came on a regular basis. Um, and then last year, it all finished. And then it just all crept up on me again. Once you're a hoarder, you're always a hoarder. It's like once you're an alcoholic, once you're a drug addict, you can be clean for five, 10 years and then something happens. It's the same with hoardism of any form. Sally has refilled her flat in less than two years. But there are some who have hoarded for a lifetime. A very warm welcome to my humble abode here at Westcott, to which you are cordially invited to have a look round and ascertain my lifestyle. Nine-year-old Richard has been hoarding magazines and newspapers for over four decades. Well, it's literally one of each paper, you know, like the uh, Mirror, the Sun, the Star, the Times, and Financial Times, you know, the whole lot. Well, overall, with stuff that's up in the roof, we, we go back to 1976. I'm probably the only person in the entire country that's doing this. So it makes me unique. Over time, they do tend to lean. Susceptible to collapse, shall we put it that way. If you can reach the ceiling and wedge it into the ceiling, then you, you, you've won. Yeah. Just like that, you see. Hoarding becomes an issue when it affects daily life. It's believed as many as one in 20 of us could harbour a serious hoarding problem. I think there's a, a bit of a hoarder in most people in that they keep things. But some sufferers have taken their behaviour to the extreme. 69-year-old Richard has been hoarding newspapers for most of his life. This is what counts for a kitchen, which is considerably better than it once was, but obviously nowhere near as it should be. But, I mean, you know, it's the, the things I do to achieve what I want to achieve. It's not just newspapers that Richard collects. Those uh, labels come from different fruits, mainly apples. I've got the thing about packaging and various containers. This is a through way to the loo and bathroom. You can go in there if you want to, but it's up to you. So. This is uh, a master bedroom. There's one bed there and another one underneath that one. It is possible to get reasonably comfortable in a chair. What I'd like to do is to look at it all collectively and then make an overall decision and then implement it rather than just throwing things out every day or every week. Is that the aim, to kind of clear up a bit? Oh yeah, yeah. Ahead of you is where the, the sitting room is or was. But um, the, the entire content of the hall was moved into that room, so that really is quite densely packed. I used to have to allow 20 minutes to half an hour to get to the front door, but I'm um, anybody who's visited gone. <laughs> so. Eventually, the hoard outgrew Richard's bungalow, and then his hoarding went public. When the first lot of retained material found its way creeping outdoors. People had a, a full view of what was going on, whereas if it had been the walls stayed put, then obviously they wouldn't be aware of it quite so much. So that attracted attention. So I find myself in my own papers that I was trying to keep, as it were. So that got interesting. I've had multiple copies of what I appeared in. Richard became known as Britain's most extreme hoarder and successfully defended his right to keep his hoard through the courts. The human rights situation is such that everyone's entitled to the, um, the enjoyment of their possessions, I think is how it's worded. So that helped me win the day. It's a labor of love, really. Sally from Dudley has been struggling with her rubbish hoarding since adulthood. She escaped eviction two years ago, but there's concern that Sally has regressed. 
charity worker Lucy has been supporting Sally Ann since the last cleanup. Hiya, you right? But it's not always an easy job. It's been a while since I've been. It has got quite bad, hasn't it? Yeah. So what's been happening that's caused caused it to get like this? He started off with the fridge freezer when I went out and got myself a second-hand freezer, which is in the hallway. They delivered it, and then I found out that my fridge freezer was still working. The freezer was due to go to Sally's sister, who lives in the same tower block. She lives downstairs, Sal. She lives a few stairs down. Yes, I've got to speak to her tonight or tomorrow. So it just sounds like excuses. This is how it started before, weren't it? I didn't have... But the excuses. Go on, sorry. You've got to think, like, you know me, yeah, jump in. if the council were to come tomorrow and knock on your door, you could end up losing this property all because of a fridge freezer that doesn't really need to be here, does exactly. it? Exactly. Oh, we don't know that, yeah. I mean, it's a pig and eyesore, isn't it? So we'll put that into place by next Thursday. Don't forget, I've got to go from, to my father's, mm -hmm. so I'll be back Wednesday. Well, maybe you have to think that you need to make an exception and, and be here instead of at Dad's. I'm sorry, Lucy, but don't go there. Mm. I don't mean to be horrible, but don't go there. No, it's but you, you're all right. But you've got to think you, you're going to lose <laughs> it. I'm not being funny, but nobody has an idea why I'd go through with my dad. I know, but you've got to think about you, Sal, I, as well. I'm sorry, but dad has to come first. What about you? But don't pick on me regarding my father, though, Lucy. <laughs> OK, please don't. Sally's hoarding was triggered when she lost her mother, and caring for her father since has accelerated its growth. I haven't been able to grieve yet because I'm looking after my father to make sure that he's all right. It was devastating that what happened over the last five years. Things just built up, built up, built up, and, you know, I'm not asking for help, and, you know, how stubborn I am, I just try and deal with it all on my own until I eventually can't cope anymore, and then I have to scream for help. But you've got to remember, you, you know your mental health's dipping. Yeah. You know that when your flat gets to the, this condition that you need to be asking for help. No one else is going to know. Yeah, yeah. Sally and Richard are not alone. With over 1.2 million problem hoarders in the UK today, one could be your neighbour. So this is a brand new apartment when I moved in. Brand new carpets brand new painted walls. It was such a clean, new, tranquil apartment with a nice courtyard outside. 40-year-old Faye moved into her flat just over seven years ago. When I moved in, I had every intention of this being the apartment that I was going to keep really, really clean and tidy and and, you know, joy to live in, but OCD had other plans. Until recently, hoarding was classified as a category of OCD, but is now becoming recognised as a disorder in its own right. It's not a way I wanted to live. Nobody wants to live like this. Like many sufferers, though, Faye has a spectrum of mental issues. It's a bit of a vicious circle with depression because you'll do whatever it is to just give you that little glimpse of joy and I'm not somebody that turns to alcohol or drugs or anything else for their high. Mine is buying things. So I would go online and I would buy to get that high um, and especially I love a bargain so I will buy eight of the same item. I can't resist it but as soon as they arrived and the excitement of opening the box um, then they come into this apartment where I've already got far too much clutter and it'd just get added to the pile and that would make me feel depressed and anxious and therefore I would want to then have that little high again of buying something. For all intents and purposes, I was practically housebound for a year and a half. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't care about my personal hygiene, my eating well, um, that's why I put on six stone in weight um, and being isolated with all of this junk around you, anybody's going to be impacted by that. With her flat overflowing with the bargains, Faye's hoarding is becoming harder to hide behind closed doors. I've got a pillow which I pop here 
and I always make sure the blinds are closed because I don't want my neighbours to know that I'm sleeping on the sofa. My neighbours know I have OCD. I'm certain they don't know the extent of it. I don't think they have any idea that I haven't slept in my bedroom for almost three years. I worry that anyone who comes into my apartment is going to judge me, is going to have misconceptions that I'm dirty. OCD and hoarding is a very much a secret illness. So this is my boiler, but because I feel too humiliated for a serviceman to see all of this stuff, it's just too much anxiety for me to get him to come and fix it. The anxiety of having somebody in far outweighs the luxury of having hot water. And so for the last four or five years, I've been having stone cold showers. Faye's OCD has also affected her personal and professional life throughout adulthood. When I was in a relationship, my OCD was really bad, but because I had a partner, it would keep me in check. I was married for 12 years, and it's been 10 years since I've been living on my own. I used to be a very sociable person when I was in a relationship. I used to be very much the life and soul of the party, and I loved to be the centre of attention. Now I've become very socially anxious. I have such a lovely home and to not be able to have people into my home to enjoy it, I've become very, very isolated and very lonely. But it's only in the last 10, 15 years or so that it's got like it has. That is literally one of each. With this flat, it's kind of like an obstacle course. The only way to reduce a hoard is if things are thrown away faster than they're collected. Faye is fighting back in her flat before her home is completely taken over. This is the section of the room that I've completed. So this for me, I know a lot of people will look at this room and still see a lot of clutter, but to me, this is a piece of success. Like many OCD sufferers, Faye has a specific process for doing even routine activities. Because of my OCD, anything that needs to go into the bin, I have a ritual that it needs to be opened up fully so I can have a look inside. I have to touch the sides, then I have to shake the item 30 times, and then it can go in the bin. So for most people, throwing away a wrapper would take them less than a second. For me, that one wrapper could take me 10 minutes. It's not about money or the importance of a document or receipt. It's about certainty. Certainty that, for me, I haven't thrown anything away because certainty equals control. Control is the way that I manage in this very uncontrollable and spontaneous world. And that can go in there. Done. OK. Done. The next on my list was obvious items that will create a great impact, which is this big item, this, and a chair that I won in a competition. And if I got rid of those items, oh, and there's a table behind there, which I need to take over to give to my dad. And then whoosh, that whole area is going to be clear, apart from this box, which is full of food. It was short dated, so it would be like 70, 80, 90% off. The date on this is the 1st of January, 2011. The element of it being such a bargain kind of takes over. And I then start to make up a logical story in my head that it makes sense for me to buy it and I'll somehow squeeze it in. When discarding even the smallest item is so difficult, there is one room in Faye's flat that poses the biggest challenge. Nobody's seen that bedroom as it stands. I feel so overwhelmed because I just, I don't know where to start. <clears throat> and people will say to me, well, why don't you just stop? And I know when they say it, they're well-meaning. Oh my goodness. But in my head, I'm, I want to say back to them, why didn't I think of that? The OCD at the moment is bigger than me. It's a whole spectrum of feeling 
angry, frustrated, but mostly regretful and and disappointed about everything I've lost in life because of it. In the Midlands, Sally has raised the alarm and called in some emergency support to help her with her hoard. Extreme cleaners Kaz and T have known Sally since her first intervention two years ago. I'm looking forward to seeing Sally. I haven't seen her in a while, so um, it'd be nice to see her, catch up with her, have a cup of tea. From what I can tell, everything should be okay. I do ask her every now and then, how's the flat, how's things going? So she always says that there's a bit of shopping in the hallway. Hopefully everything is smelling of roses. Hello. Hello. Ooh, stranger. Hello. How are you, darling? Oh. What's going on, Sally? Okay. It is getting close over there. Yeah, I know. I've got to sort stuff out. So what's going on? Let me have a look at the kitchen. Go on, then. Sally! Yes, I know. Sally! I know. Hold on, let me have a look. Sally! Yeah? Are you shitting me right now? No. Nope. Oh, Sally. The battle with hoarding can be a lifelong struggle. Like any addiction, a relapse can occur at any time. There's plates of cat food. I know what happened was, I bought a bean, well, I got that all sorted. That bean's there, has been there since just before Christmas. Is that a brand new bean? Right, yeah, but it's just I've been dealing with a lot of other stuff and I wanted to sort that out myself. Rubbish hoarder Sally is having an emergency clean of her flat less than two years after the council last intervened. Do you know what? I'm, I'm upset with you. Well, I There's know. no excuse, because you, you're yeah. just a phone call away. I know it's bad now and I should have asked you, but to be honest, that's the only second time it's ever happened. As we stepped out the lift, we could smell the smell. flat, Sally. Do you know that hasn't been like that for a long time? Yeah, but as soon as it started to go like that, Sal, that's when you should have called yeah. us. Sally's kitchen has got so bad, it's classed as a biohazard. Dealing with it is an emergency. I've been dealing with a lot of stuff with my dad, because dad's you had You never all... once mentioned the kitchen was like that, Sally. You never Because the kitchen once wasn't that bad, the... though, a couple of weeks back. No, but you That's only just... happened in the last it's X not, amount of weeks. Not, it's, if it doesn't look but how we right, left it... To, if you can't get to your sink, it's an issue. No, if it's, okay, it's, if it's not how we left it... If you can't get to your counter, it's an issue. Yeah, I know that. Oh, I know that. I'm not, I'm not stupid. I mean, I know that. But you never said the thing. No, I didn't say that. you kept us in the dark. It yeah. seems as though you've lied to us, Sal, because you've not mentioned it. Well, no, I have mentioned it. Yeah, I wasn't lying, right. but I hadn't mentioned it yet. Yeah. Let's just go and get our blues. Okay. Let's just get our blues and crack on. She didn't want to disappoint us, I suppose, and she didn't want to um, upset us or feel like she's let us down in any way. And we don't feel let down because she is a compulsive hoarder and it is a mental health condition. What we are upset about is the fact that the help is there for yeah. her and she well, hasn't yeah. accepted it. Oh, do you want any fix for your nose to the smell? Sally's one of our clients that we've had for such a long time and she's really tried. But sometimes she needs that little extra help. I don't know I make excuses and I shouldn't. There's the maggots there, Sally. Yeah. There's a big group of maggots right there. Oh, those are little compared to what's been in. There's some carpet bugs in there as well, floating around. Sally, why can't I lift this up here? Because obviously gravy. I can't believe I've effed up again. <laughs> you got everything? Yep. Right, thank you. When I look in there, I see um, relief, you know, that I've uh, got it, well, we've got it rid of. 
There's a, a wave of calmness over me now all the rubbish is gone. The kitchen may be safe again, but Sally will have to pay to have the rest of her flat cleared and made safe before the... because she's so particular about where everything is that you're going to sort of re re you know, rebel against that and almost be, do the opposite. I understand so what you're saying. For me, I don't think that's the reason. Okay. I very much aspire to be as my mum is. Ah, OK. Um, so you've done the, the, the first stage of it. You've actually become aware of it. You know, like you said, all the theoretical stuff mm. of it. So the next step is to actually physically start doing the practical side of it. How would you feel about us doing a little tour? I don't particularly feel comfortable with it, but I know that if I need to get the help, then I need to deal with the discomfort. Okay, shall I lead the way? Yeah. I've done this section. Yeah, okay. And it's amazing how that little bit of floor space can make you feel amazing. Yeah. Hold on to that feeling because yeah. that's the start of you continuing the good work you've already done. Thank so. you. Well done. This box is full of food. Okay. You could work out potentially how much of that you could get through in re realistically yeah. uh, before it expires. Oh, it's all expired. Ah, okay. So this is your bedroom. So where do you sleep? Um, since, well, it's been about three and a half years now, I've been sleeping on the sofa. Right, okay. Yeah. So again, that's another incentive, isn't yeah. it? So this has become my norm. Yeah, that's right. And it's only when external sources come in and they're like they ask the question where do you sleep and it's like on the sofa and I just think that's such a sad story. I've had an idea and I wondered what, what your opinion is. I was actually going to bring everything from the hallway into here, everything that's left in the living room into here so that the the hallway and the living room are 100% done I would and everything is in here. I would strongly advise not to do that okay. only because it's almost like yeah. picking up things from one yeah. room, yeah. putting them in another, and then you've made one room very overwhelming yeah. to, to deal with. And in reality, although you think you may well deal with it after, quite often what happens, I've been to places where 10 years later that door's still right. shut. I went and got some boxes from the local supermarket. What I'm trying to do, which I've started here, is I've got a big box there, box there. I... I'm trying to put everything into boxes boxes could probably end up becoming part of the clutter if you're not right, careful. Right. It becomes just a pile of boxes then in yeah. a room instead. So it's just yeah. it's just delaying the process, I think. When this was at its worst, it made me feel like I was literally in a tomb. I felt buried in all of this. Yeah. Um, and it just felt so, like it was kind of coming in on me and just, yeah. I, I would do anything to distract myself. For Faye to conquer her hoarding, it's essential she avoids delaying the disposal of unwanted items. So, yeah. Try and do a little bit of decluttering every single day if you yep. can, but just focus on one room at yep. a time. Every time you pick something up, yep. think, do I want this? And if you say yes, just dig a little bit deeper as to why you want it and do you need it. And the other thing is, if you do want to keep it, 
where am I going to home this? Yeah. Everything has to have a home. If it has a home, even if things get a little bit untidy, because, you know, we're all like that, then at the end of the day, whenever you have a little tidy up, think, oh, right, yeah, I know that goes there. Mm. And you've got somewhere to put it. But if you haven't, it's just going to end up staying on the floor. It's true. Oh, oh, well done. Well done. Well done. Thanks for coming. Take care. Bye. See, See you later. later. I'm really pleased. I feel like we've made a lot of progress today and she's got a lot of self-awareness. And I think the important thing is she's actually raring to go and she's already started the process, which is brilliant. And I'm glad I was there. I could give her a few tips and, and homework to do as well. And I feel like if she does a little bit every day, she's going to progress quite quickly as well and see some good results. With the accumulation of 40 years of hoarding in Richard's home, there's a whole neighbourhood that would like to help him clear it. Are we shifting papers this morning, have we? Uh, not in the sense that you mean, no. But, like uh, in the skip? Uh, no, to have this banter between in us. Regular you know. banter. <laughs> well, I've got to know Richard, I think it's over seven years. I mean, Richard has been to my house for Christmas dinner. We're trying as a community to try and help him. The oldest part of Richard's hoard is the thing he's more passionate about than his papers. With me, it happens to be classic cars, and of course they take up the room that they do. And I think effectively 17 broken cars around this land here. If we could just get one car done up, I'd love to see him driving around in this old vintage Jag, just having a life. If I was push comes to shove, which would I choose? Obviously, the cars are a greater love than, than mere newspapers. I mean, it would be nice to be able to deal with both, but there you go. After a lifetime of hoarding, it's possible things may never change. I would not like it to be just people coming in and just ordering up a number of skips and then the whole lot just disappears because that represents a, pretty much a life's work just gone to waste. An Englishman's home is his castle. I've built my home, and, and you can call it what you like, but um, it's, it, it rep it's an extension of me. It represents what I am and, and, and don't sort of interfere sort of thing. Richard's happy. That's the way he wants to live, and we have to respect that and work with him at the same time. With the biohazard hoard in the kitchen cleared, Sally is expecting extreme cleaners, Kaz and T, to help clear the rest of the flat. I'm slowly getting buried alive in here. <laughs> With the freezer out of the flat, access to the bedrooms reveals the full extent of Sally's hoard. This morning, I was suffering with a lot of stress because I know when Kaz and T come today, they're going to look and go, Sally, what have you been doing? And they're going to tell me off because, you know, I've gone back to my old ways. Go away, I've changed my mind. <laughs> Hello. Two years ago, the flat took weeks to clear, but Sally is optimistic this is a simpler job. As you see, some of this was behind the fridge. The goal is to create a usable bedroom. The last clean, I was in the hallway, they bring bags out, I'd sort it, and they were shoveling all the rubbish away. But because this is a completely different type of clean, I think we'll go through that, that bedroom pretty quick. It does look worse than it is. So I was going to do the clean myself this year, but when they came um, and we did the kitchen, I made um, a decision to have them come and help me. This way, I'm forced to do it, and it means now I can get my bed, after being two years in here, into the small bedroom. So that's my goal. Half of me wants to throttle you. I know. And half of me wants to smile. Yeah, I know. What are we going to do with you? What are we going to do with you? I want all this gone today. See, I'm not sure, but I can smell... Oh, I can smell urine. Usually I've got a good memory of things, and I just for some reason I haven't remembered what it looked like in there, so... <sighs> no, they should really throttle me. <sighs> wow, 
what's in here? That is my young computer, my laptop. The cat urinated on the bag, so God knows if the computer still works. <laughs> Tackling her rubbish too. I'll keep the lid just with a slight section of jar, just about that much, so that it minimises the possibility of anything accidentally falling in. With her OCDs to contend with, even a few items can be a slow process. The irony is that I can't even think of the last time, probably not even in the last 10 years, where I have actually done the check and suddenly found a receipt or a bit of money. And what have I lost as regards time and mental health and everything else for doing this? And then as soon as that's done, that needs to be closed and go out to the bin. If that stays in the flat for too long, I'll get too anxious about it and I'll empty it and, and go back through it again. Throwing out even the smallest amount of rubbish is a challenge. Oh, I want to go through it. What to do, what to do. Faye's disorder can mean that performing her rituals once isn't always enough. I've been making such good progress and I'm disappointed that I checked it. I should have left it. It's just rubbish. You know? Yeah. Who cares? After four days' hard work and an estimated ton of the hoard removed, Sally's flat is habitable again. It feels absolutely wonderful. It's really hard to describe, so much so that I was actually crying today when we were, you know, talking about it because I've been wanting to be in this bedroom since I moved in. I'm glad after 13 years of now wanting to be in here, I'm, I'm here. How Sally can help herself is just set goals every day. You know, small things like making sure that the catalyst is clean, getting rid of her daily rubbish, so that's all I can encourage Sally to do, is to keep a daily routine of small jobs. Our advice is everything in your home has a home. Home, yeah. So if you put it back in its home, it will stay there and you won't lose anything and it will stay tidy. There is a bit of concern when people talk, um, are we going to go back to my old habits? I believe once you're a hoarder, you're always a hoarder, but you have to fight. I think it could happen again if she doesn't have the right support yeah. network around her. No, but I know she enjoys the fact that we're around. Yeah. And she sees us as mates. We're like family now. We'll come back and check on her regardless. We're yes. going to have to. Throwing away unwanted items proved a painful way for 40-year-old Faye to reduce her hoard. Today, she's donating instead. I've got three items I need to take to the charity shop. I tend to keep the numbers of things to take down because too many causes me too much anxiety, especially when I get to the shop. For me, especially books, this is not fun, so I have to check every single page before this can go into the bag. The goal I have is to give away 10 items a day, and I figure that equals 300 items in a month. The first stage is complete. The items are out of the flat, but will she be able to let them go? After decades of filling his bungalow, Richard's home has become a time bomb, dangerous for his health. Had I appreciated earlier on what I was letting myself in for, I would have approached it much differently than I in fact did. So unfortunately, we're a bit late to actually implement what I've learned. But um, I get through it, get by, so I'm reasonably happy. 
Hoarding is a problem that just grows if the sufferer doesn't take action. And the result is inevitable. Space will eventually run out. It's a trouble. It, it, it's, um, there's sort of piles of stuff here, there and everywhere waiting to be processed. The trouble is that you've got to carry on with ordinary life in between times. You know, it's very difficult. Day to day is um, just going through the normal domestic routine of um, keeping body and soul together, as it were, and, and also trying to prevent the inevitable um, bit by bit accumulation of things. Richard's home is now so full, even the basics are becoming impossible. You have to hold it out like that, because if you don't, the chocolate melts and you get it all over your fingers. Or well, you get...